one foot in front of the other is the only way to unravel the story of how your hunt turns out. Bad weather, missed opportunities, and sore feet only add to the drama that is sheep hunting. In the pursuit of sheep and producing the best of the West, no two storylines are the same. Exhaustion, long days, and potential defeat only thicken the plot. Overcoming the odds and notching the side of a sheep tag is an incredible feeling. Coming off the mountain with a heavy pack can be strenuous, but nothing's harder on your heart than coming off a mountain empty-handed. Eating tag soup on a sheep hunt is as bitter as it gets, but so is the plight of a sheep hunter. Well over 50 sheep hunts have been highlighted on episodes of the Best of the West over the years, and as the pioneers of long-range hunting, we enjoy a challenge. There are far easier ways to produce episodes than chasing sheep in nine different states, six countries, and three continents, but cold weather, high elevation, and endless miles on horseback isn't enough to deter us from showcasing some of the greatest hunting adventures worldwide. We've seen the needle threaded in Tajikistan, patience pay off in Arizona, rolling stones in British Columbia, and a last day of the season double in Wyoming. Putting hands on a ram is no easy task, and being able to document that process is always an honor. This week on The Best of the West, we're privileged to be following Carrie and Leo Goss on a doll sheep hunt in the Yukon with Kuswa Lake Outfitters. My wife and I have enjoyed sheep hunting through the years. She's uh, working on her third Grand Slam. I think a stone sheep will complete her third slam. We enjoy sheep hunting because you meet a lot of great people, the outfitters and the guides. You know, sheep hunting is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of great people in the industry. Sheep hunting takes you to uh, obviously great places like the Yukon, British Columbia, all the western states and Mexico. We've been fortunate to hunt those areas. If you're going to sheep hunt, you need to come as prepared as possible and be ready to work hard and, and hopefully you'll find some success. And, and that's what we found with sheep hunting and why we enjoy it. I'm Carrie Goss. I just came back of this, on this doll sheep hunt that I've been waiting for for two years because of 2020, all the cancellations in Canada, I couldn't come up. So here I am now. Sheep hunting takes you to so many amazing, surreal places. I just absolutely fell in love with sheep hunting. The anticipation on the sheep hunt when you're gonna get dropped in and you know you're gonna be dropped in with a little plane, you're gonna be landed on some lake and then you're gonna be backpacking from there is is always a little, you know, just kind of exciting and nervous and you just got a backpack so it's not like you can take a lot of stuff. I know the feeling, I didn't sleep much the night before, but I was excited. So when we did get dropped off and then you don't know if you're going to be there a day, two days, or if it's going to be a full hunt, seven, eight, nine days. You're just not sure. And then the weather, it has to be good to even get you out. When we arrived and landed there, and Josh was with us, my guide, and he pre-scouted a couple of days, so he knew there was some rams in the area, but we didn't know if they were going to be there when we got there. I spent two weeks out scouting, scouting some, some of our southern country where it's not a lot of sheep, but some pretty good ones. Spent two weeks down there, found some pretty nice rams. First thing I'll look for is mast on the bottoms. Look a lot for the mast to not just be there, but to actually carry through, like down at least into the bottoms. Then you get in, as you're getting in closer, you're typically on, on age, because we, we hunt a lot, a lot of age here. You're just going in, checking rings, make sure you get your consistent growth. And, count them up and then from there it depends on what your hunter wants. Sometimes you're just looking for an eight plus year old ram. Sometimes you're looking for something a little better and then you're looking for so how long, kind of how deep they drop, how much come back, how wide they are, what kind of mass they have, how well they carry their mass. And that basically will run you through a good ram. You get something that carries its mass well and has a bit of age to it. It's, it's a nice ram. On most every sheep hunt, there's times it will, you will suffer, it will suck at, in the moment, but to be aware that it's gonna be hard times, be able to pull yourself through that. It's mentally really is, is the biggest part of sheep hunting. To actually be able to keep, keep your head in it, which is, is tough. It's, we all lose the battle sometimes. Almost always the sheep hunt will be tough, 
But that's what makes it fun. It makes it rewarding in the end. The harder you have to work for it, the more you appreciate it. The pursuit of doll sheep is not for the faint of heart. Aside from burning lungs, steep terrain, and heavy packs, things also rarely go according to plan. Take, for instance, the first time Best of the West filmed a self-guided sheep hunt in 2015. After flying into sheep country and securing the plane against wind and bears, it was a two-day grind in and out of the river to finally claw up the side of a mountain and set up camp. After locating a legal ram and moving in for the shot, the herd split and the target ram vanished. With the score rams one, hunter zero, it was time to head back and regroup. Only then did the target ram stand up 100 yards away. With the score settled and heads held high, the victory was short-lived. Upon returning to the plane, a bear had popped both tires and ripped a hole in the wing. The next two days were spent waiting for supplies to arrive and fantasizing about bear hunting this area the following spring. When it comes to keeping score on doll sheep hunts, it's no secret that we've had our asses handed to us more than once. Unsuccessful doll sheep hunts have aired multiple times on episodes of The Best of the West to showcase the reality of what hunting sheep could be like. Sheep country has no prejudice, sympathy, or guarantees. Often bitter in the moment, but sweeter over time. You know, sheep hunting can be very enjoyable, and, and you know, there is, a, there is a few things that you can do better or worse that can improve your trip. Obviously, uh, these hunts are, are expensive hunts, and preparation is, is critical. You know, when you talk to the guides and the outfitters of the industry, one of the things that happens quite often is that people aren't familiar or don't practice with their rifle. If you're going to spend all the money on a sheep hunt and all the energy and travel, to come clear up to Canada or Mexico or Western states. I mean, take the time to really get to know your rifle, learn how to shoot some distance, and take the time to practice. Another thing that happens, happens a lot, like sheep country is steep and it's a lot of hard work. A lot of the inexperienced hunters that haven't been on some of the hunts, you know, they, they show up with half of a outdoor store with them and you really can survive for a 10 or 14 day sheep hunt with very little gear. Like just choose your gear, choose quality gear, and come with a small amount of gear and you'll be better off for it because either the horses or yourself are gonna be carrying it around and just lumbering all that excess gear around the mountain is tiring in itself. That'll wear you out. Do your research on your gear and have a good idea with what you can live with. Believe me, it's way less than you, than you probably think it is if you haven't done some mountain hunting. You know, sheep hunting is so near and dear to my heart because, you know, it's so difficult. And when you start at the bottom and there's so much brush or willows or just difficult terrain, and then it just starts climbing up and then you're trying to get over the boulders and you've got a backpack on and you're just getting pushed back and pulled back and your gun's on your, your shoulder. And, you know, there's been times where I just thought, I don't think I can make it. I feel like I just, it's too physical. And I just kept thinking and I just say, okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And I just take one step at a time. And I kept doing it. When I needed to take a break, I stopped and took a break. And then I just kept doing it again. And every time I've made to every top of the mountain, and I do have to give it to God. I feel he gives me the strength to do it. And I feel like that's why I achieved it. And then even on this hunt and every hunt I go, I'm just so grateful that God is there carrying me all the way through. It took about two hours to get up there. And it was around about a thousand vertical feet. And so it had to take a few breaks along the way. And once we got up to the top, um, we saw this lake and we set up our little tents. And um, when we were there, we put our tents up and looked clear across on the other side of the lake towards the edge and there was other people there. So we knew immediately we had um, other hunters in the area and had to make a plan because it was going to be opening day and there was a lot of people out obviously doing the same thing looking for a doll sheep so we decided to you know make sure we get up early and as soon as it got light to start hiking so that we could then climb up a little higher to get a good advantage point to hopefully see a big sheep and and that's what our plan was and the next morning we did we got up early we started hiking we went clear up a high onto the high point we went down we went up on another ridge but it was about a two hour hike over a couple different ridges and every ridge we had to just like really be careful and 
go up and stop and make sure we didn't bump anything if there was anything on the other side and once we got to that down the other side and there was no sheep anywhere and we had to climb up another ridge and we got up to the other ridge and sure enough when we peeked around the corner there was definitely a band of some rams and then obviously some ewes and lambs as well and they were about a thousand yards climbed up another mountain onto another high point and looked straight across and there was um, a lot of rams, a big, big band of rams and in that ram we could tell a distance there was a nice heavy sheep that we needed to get a good closer look. So we decided since we knew there was other hunters in the area that we could see them hiking in the distance that we had to like try to shuffle along and scurry around the mountain and then go around and then sneak up and that's what we did. It took a while but we made it and then we snuck up on him and got a really good close look and saw a beautiful heavy mature doll sheep. So as we were looking Josh our, my guide he was really making sure that the rings and he was legal and how you know if he was the biggest one out of all of them and watching him and we decided yeah that is definitely a big one and then we knew when we were hiking around trying to beat the other hunters that were obviously hunting as well, that they, they were around a thousand yards that we knew that we didn't know if they were going to come up or they going to spook the rams or what. And then pretty soon the ram we were looking at, um, they were like three of them rams and they bedded down. And so then we had to sit there and wait. And then we were like, okay, are they going to get spooked from the other hunters or is this going to happen? And we just had to just sit there and patiently wait. And I always try to get myself mentally prepared to shoot. I keep myself really calm. I start taking deep breaths and I got my rifle out and I put it down um, and I put my bipod up and then I put my backpack underneath the stock of the gun and I was just taking calm, deep breaths. And I was just focusing on where he is, getting him in my scope and just keeping myself calm. And I really, that was my first focus when I do that because I want to make the perfect one shot and I don't want to be at all wobbly and I don't want to injure an animal. So I really think through it and I just ask God for the strength to keep me calm, cool with the one perfect shot. And I just stay focused and slowly breathe. And then my good Josh was talking to me and my husband was talking to me and everybody was saying, whispering, you know, how far he was and okay. And just waiting for that right moment to happen. Practice your shooting. It's, shooting's big, not just go to the range, sit down, sandbags, shoot 100, 200 yards. Get out and shoot in the field. You might not have mountains there, but you can throw a pack up, throw whatever up to your real life hunting situation. Set up shooting if you can. Practice angles, practice your wind, because it's, it affects it more than people think it does, especially the angles. It's, people always hit high. And it's good shooters. Whatever, you always end up hitting high, so when you're shooting uphill or downhill, you always want to aim low on them, not too low, but low enough to where if you hit them, you're heart shooting them. If you hit high, which you probably will, you're still killing them properly, doing it quick and ethical, which is obviously what we all want. The one ram, one of them got up. It was a smaller one and it was kind of bugging the other ones that were laying there. And the big one was still laying. And so I just sat there and watched and we're all just sitting there watching and just waiting and, you know, to make the perfect shot. So you had to make sure you had to get up in time. And then pretty soon the second one went up, got up. And then he, I knew once the second one and the first one got up, the third one's about to. So I just kind of got myself in position and I had a, bullet in my safety was on and I was just had him on and I was just waiting and just waiting and I was hoping nothing was going to spook him and sure enough I could see his leg and how he kind of moved his body and then he picked himself up and I was just like okay and I said is everybody ready I'm on him I'm ready and I said yes the best of the west is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Hunt and Fool, the best of the West shooting systems. Defiance Custom Actions, the Wild Sheep Foundation, 
Optics and LongRangeStore.com. For more information about hunting with Kuswa Lake Outfitters, please call 780-865-6368 or go online to kuswaoutfitters.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit longrangestore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. Once he did stand up, then I just take another big breath and I just be really thinking about what I'm doing. I got him all focused in and took the shot and it was a one perfect shot and he literally just went down right after that. <laughs> I, was real, I mean, he didn't know what hit him. <laughs> Congrats. That was awesome. You know, walking up on that sheep and with my husband that's been hunting with me for over 24 years and uh, then Josh, our guide, you know, when, when you get a beautiful animal and you're literally in the backwoods and you're over two different ridges on the mountain, you're like really need all the help you can get, especially when it's backpack home and I was so thankful to have them. And just seeing how heavy he was and just touching his horns all the way from the bases and he had totally flared out on both sides and his hair was completely snow white and we were all just taking in the moment and just so grateful to all be there and it was just so absolutely beautiful on top of that mountain. To have a doll sheep, to have the mass and have it carry it down and then to have the length of the doll sheep, I just feel so blessed to have harvested this amazing beautiful animal and how white his fur is and he's just absolutely a stud of a doll sheep and I got him with my best of the west rifle thank you love it one shot and no suffering just completely down and that's the way I love to see things like that happen opener day so I've been going I don't know 11 or 12 years trying to make an opener day ram and Finally got her. That's awesome. Yep. Made yep. it a little easier for you then, right? A little easier. But lots of second day rams, lots of third day rams, but the first first day ram. So did that mean it saved your it's, legs that work? Because it's still, we hiked we'll find, in. We'll find out. <laughs> Backpacked in and hiked completely up and then again over the next hill and came across this beautiful one. One of the great things about sheep hunting is it takes you to all the beautiful places in the world. You meet all the best people. Uh, sheep hunting is hard work. So you're gonna meet a lot of great hardworking people going on your sheep hunts and that's one big uh, part of the part of the trip that doesn't get talked about a lot is is uh, you meet all the best people sheep hunting and you get to go to all the best places in the world. The so. biggest thing is it's team. It's, it takes a team to it do does. it. It does, yeah. it takes a team. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just really does. Then the work begins after we took the pictures and we were really just excited and just thought you know, how exciting this is and how beautiful this ram actually was. And then we started skinning and I was really thankful I had them because when you start taking all the meat and you take the hide and you take the horns, you have a lot of weight and all you have is a backpack. So we each just divided up and started stuffing in our backpack so that we could get all the meat and get everything out and take one trip. And then we started packing out. And I was so thankful to have that help. And it really is such a team effort when you harvest a sheep because it takes, you usually have a guide and then you and obviously someone else is always great to have because the more that you're there to share those wonderful memories with, that's, that's really what it's all about. That's, <laughs> that's how you do it. If you try to like lift it with your arm, it will about tear your back off. So I'm Carrie Goss, the founder of Desire. I built it because of, on sheep hunts, how I felt the need women needed for clothes to fit and to function and be warmth and durable during my sheep hunts adventure. And each piece that I created was based on sheep hunting because sheep hunting is so difficult terrain and so difficult and could get cold, freezing, rainy. So that's when I did the whole system to fit and perform while you're out there in the elements living on top of a mountain sheep hunting. And then, you know, when we were flying out and the plane was coming, and it, it was, it's a bittersweet because it's like, you don't want it to end, 
but you're thankful that you achieved what you did and you're going out safely and you had a great harvest and you have all this meat and this beautiful animal that you've harvested. So, um, and then just, you just feel like you really just accomplished something. Sheep hunting is such an accomplishment because where they live is so difficult. And, the, and like I said, the terrain and the mountains um, are just, you know, physically. So you just have to take it one step at a time. And sometimes I felt like when I couldn't get up there all the way because it was so steep and so hard or the boulders or the willows trying to beat you through and you, whatever it is, I just kept saying, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's what has really led me on top of every mountain that I've ever climbed. And so I'm really grateful for that. Thanks for watching this episode of The Best of the West. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest long-range hunting adventures.